obviously you're not going to go do this. This is a lot of work. I mean, this is their business. They've got to take responsibility for that. So what exactly are they paying you for? Their current situation, you know, is that they have um, revenue and no profit, right? Now, what I would say is we have to also ask ourselves why that is. And there's obviously multiple reasons. Um, and that's your role as somebody that is a CFO is to figure out why. Why, and, and, and I'll let you answer this, but I want to put my frame on this first. The number one value you can provide to this person is not doing any work in the future. It, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with a Fathom report. It's got nothing to do with any of that stuff. That stuff is all about retention and getting them to continue to pay later. The most important thing you can offer them today to get them to sign up with you and work for you is why. Why is that happening? What is the reason? And you, as someone that is in this space with these people, it's your job to be better than them at understanding why that is. Now, it's a little bit hard and you'll obviously learn this more and more as you go along because it's a little bit hard in your niche because when these companies are selling many different types of products, you know, you might not be an expert in these different types of products, even though they're e-commerce, even though they're consumer products, there's still going to be some variation and you might not understand exactly why or why not. But here's the frame I'll put on this. There's very few reasons why this could be an issue. And it, they're limited to issues on the PL, which is good. And so we can kind of ask very similar questions. Is it a problem with revenue? When we think about revenue, is it a problem with the pricing or is it a problem with the volume? Obviously, right now they're at 1.5 million in sales. So it's not a massive volume issue, but based on their pricing, like, should they have higher pricing? Are there pricing problems relative to competitors? Have they made the decision that they're just going to price as low as possible so they make it up on volume, but then because they have 1.5 million, they really need to be doing 50 million to make it work? That's a question, and I'm going to keep going, and then you can kind of come back on this. But I always start with the top of the P&L, right? So if I'm going to be a CFO with them, and I'm going to help them increase profitability, which is really the main outcome of why they're going to work with a CFO, is to help them increase profitability over the short and long term. Revenue is the very first thing. And I'm really thinking about price and, and volume. Then I'm thinking about cost of sales, right? I'm thinking about, you know, what is going on with cost of sales? Is it, um, is it higher than it should be? Is it in line? Is it structurally high? So this isn't something that we can change. There's no way to change it based on negotiation with vendors, based on spoilage, based on all the different factors there which then leads me to gross profit. And I'm going to you know, compare this with industry average in, in my mind. And I'm also going to compare this with industry potential, which is way more important. If you've met one company that you know, has been selling a similar product or the same product, competitive product, that has a higher gross profit margin than them, instantly you know it's possible to do better. And you have to understand why. And the good news is there's very few reasons, reasons really related to revenue and cost of sales. And then we're also going to look at OPEX. And with OPEX, we're going to look at salaries, headcount, um, you know, personal expenses, um, you know, other expenses, just going down and looking at all the other things that, that lead into uh, net profit. And then we're going to look at, uh, I, don't, I don't think this is going to be the issue here. We're going to look at tax. We're going to look at post-tax net profit. And so, like the main value you can figure out for them is, okay, hey, this is your current situation. And right now, this is where you're at, right? We went through these numbers. You're at 1.5 million, you're making 46, right? So 46,000 divided by 1.5 million, that is a 3% profit margin. Now, and when I say profit, I always count profit for these small business owners as it's their salary and net profit on the business. So he's at 3%, right, in that example. So I'm looking at 3% net profit here. That's about the same here. And that is here, let's say that's about 6%, right? Because, you know, something like that. And so the, the question for each of these, you have to look at these on a case-by-case -case basis is why. And your value to them is basically figuring out why is that the case, okay? And then with that, once you understand why that's the case, the people you're going to be able to help the most 
are the people where, okay, they've got a current situation, then they've got a desired situation, and, and a desired situation that is also possible. Because everybody's desired situations that, okay, yeah, I'd like to own the Maldives and not have to pay for it, right? <laughs> well, that'd, be, that'd be cool, right? Well, is that likely? Is that believable? Is that something like, like if you went on the phone and you told these guys you get them to own the Maldives and they wouldn't have to pay for it, the likelihood of them paying at the end of that call would be pretty low, right? Because the believability would be low. So it's got to be a desired situation that's within their realm of belief. And, and you want to stretch it a little bit. So maybe they feel like, wow, it's a stretch, but I can see it happening. So it's got to be on the borderline there of something that's actually possible in your mind and that you can transfer into their mind. So I'm going to be looking at going through this, like, okay, revenue, like, can we increase revenue? Can, can we increase revenue? Is there something we can do? Now, here's the key thing. And this is where a lot of people get hung up on the CFO services. You are not responsible for increasing revenue. You are not responsible for increasing volume and you are not responsible for increasing price. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I mean by that in a second. Cost of sales. Can we decrease this? Is there a way to do it? Gross profit. Are we going to be able to increase that? Right. What would be the things that would lead to that for this particular business in this particular niche? OPEX, is this possible to decrease? Is there a possibility to decrease that? And we're going to look at each of these, and hopefully we'll have multiple. On the tax side, is there a possibility to decrease this, especially as we grow? Because they don't have a lot of profit right now. So when you look at all these, the question is, um, uh, actually, let's go back here and take this revenue and no profit, because I had that as a little typo there. So the question is, when we go through and we look at these, okay. Well, obviously, you're not going to go do this. This is a lot of work. I mean, this is their business. They've got to take responsibility for that. So what exactly are they paying you for? And that's the key, right? Um, see here, we'll do make the plan on each of these. They're paying you to make the plan, right? The first thing is they're paying you to make the plan with them. And then they're also going to be paying you to go through and hold them accountable. So for example, like, you know, that feeling that a lot of these business owners get when they think about going to talk to their CFO is a lot of times like going to talk to the dentist. They're like, oh, I don't want to do it, but I don't want to look like, you know, I don't want to look like the Grim Reaper or something. So I got to go. And so you're helping them make the plan on this call. And then you're going to help them hold them accountable every single month. You're also going to give them the information to be able to, and, and, and here's a couple of things here. In, you know, understand results, interpret them, interpret them, um, make a plan of action and get it done. So this is kind of how, now, this is all great, right? This all sounds good, Andrew. Okay, great, that sounds good. I tell you what, none of this is gonna sell them. The only thing that is going to sell them, and the reason I'm showing you all this is because you have to have conviction in yourself. This is what you're going to do because the only thing that is going to sell them and get them to pay you. Remember, we talked about current situation, right? We could even do this current situation, screwed, right? Desired situation, way better. You have to know based on their situation that you can actually pull this off. And you have to come back here and say, honestly, I can tell you right now you're running a business that should be doing 250,000 in net profit, but you're only doing 46. Honestly, right now, I can tell you you're running a business that should be doing 150,000 net profit, but you're only doing 50. I can tell you right now you're running a business that should be doing 450,000. I mean, this is the industry I'm in. This is the work that I do. Because of the way you're pricing, because of the way that you guys have structured the costing, because of the way that you've got your brother and your mother and your broke brother-in-law on the payroll here, you should be making 450,000, you're doing 1.5. Now, I'm not telling you these are the right numbers. You know these kinds of businesses better than I do. I wanted to go through current situation, desired situation. The greater the gap here, right, then determines your fee. So in this example, they should be doing 200,000. That's an extra, or 250,000. That's an extra $200,000 worth of value. Theoretically, we should be able to charge one third of that, which would get us to 70K right? That would get us to about 65K, which would be a potential for your fee. If we look at this one, that would get us to an extra $100,000 worth of value. There's an amount there that we could charge of $30,000 a year. That's 30K. When we get down here, that's an extra $350,000 worth of value. And so we would be able to charge, and this is how your mind should be thinking, because to be honest, you are not going to be able to charge these people to send out some reports from Futurely if you're not going to help them make more money, not possible. Yeah. And so you might not be at the stage where you know how to do this for somebody, but 
the thing we got to understand, oh, 350,000, let's do, so that's, you know, 115,000. The thing you got to understand is that this whole exercise here is probably 80% behavior and 20% accounting. Most of it is about there's behavior that is leading them to these margins. Now, there may be some structural things with some of these businesses because sometimes in e-commerce, it's just a bad product. But then like you want to ask them about the things that they need to know and that they need to do and that they need to get information on to make better decisions to grow the business and make it more profitable. Do they know margin by product? You know, all the things we normally go through to make people feel insecure on the call. But the point is, that is basically how. And then what are they buying? They're buying this. They're buying this. They're buying this. And then you're going to say, oh, my gosh, Andrew, but I, they might not do that. And what if they don't make it? It's like, yeah, well, that's their choice. And I would tell them that. I'd say, look, based on everything we've talked about today, when we went through and talked about the pricing that you guys are doing relative to competitors, when we talked about how you've organized cost of sales, when we talked about hiring your broke brother-in-law, all of these things we would fix if we were to work together. Now, if you don't believe you can go from 100000 to 450000 we shouldn't work together. If you don't believe you can go from 46000 to 250000 we shouldn't work together. So if you don't think it's possible, no need to work with me as a CFO. But if you think it's possible based on what we talked about today and you want to do it and you want to partner with me to go through that process, I'd love to be there to support you. Mm -hmm.